Hello YouTube and welcome back to the African Allure Outdoors. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ryan Clark. Remember to please like and subscribe down to the channel below. Hit the bell button if you want to receive notifications. Uh, we're just uh, going through a little bit of arrow building and things that help achieving perfect arrow flight. So I hope you enjoy this series of videos that I'm going to be making over the next few weeks. Um, basically I went to the bow shop the other day and I showed you the cutting down of the arrow to the correct size which in my case is a 32 inch arrow. Um, I then went and I got a whole lot of uh, half outserts and uh, I bought some inserts to match my grains. This is a half out and uh, it's got a 50 grain insert. Total weight on this is 100 grains and then I've got, I'm using a field point which is 200 grains up front. So um, what I do is a very important piece of equipment is a arrow spinner like this and I believe that every archer should have one because uh, it's quite important to ensure that your arrows are flying true and if you can get them everything lined up you've won half the battle already. So this is a uh, spinner that is proudly South African. This one was custom built for me by a chap down in Mapum Mapumalanga called uh, Michael Kluter. I'm going to put his contact details below. He is making these commercially now and I would definitely recommend that you get one. It's not a very expensive tool. Even if you're not making your own arrows, you can take your hunting arrows or your target arrows, put them on this and you can just check that your whole thing is lined up. And uh, I'm just going to switch to the video now where I'm going to show you three arrows. Uh, sorry, four arrows. see the one spins nicely the other three spin horribly and uh, I had a big problem with the half outs I think there was a manufacturing problem with the half outs that I've got here I've spoken to a few people subsequent to this and I found out that it was actually a problem and uh, they've given me some advice of what to do but I'm not really too sure that I like the advice that was given to me although I, I think it would work it's kind of a MacGyver and I think it's just important that before you glue in your shafts, you don't make the mistake that I do where I use super strong glue and you can't get the, the things out. I eventually have managed to get them out. But how we are going to insert tune is we are going to put the insert into the arrow. And then what we're going to do is we would take a, a marker pen. In my case, I like to use white. Uh, I'm getting a little bit old, so my, you know, my arms are getting a little bit longer, so to speak. And um, I would make a mark. I don't know if you guys can see that mark there, but I put a mark on the, on the in, the half out and on the shaft. And then what I do is I put that on the arrow spinner, and I just spin that, just very slowly. You don't need to to run this thing at a great speed. Um, I prefer using the side of my hand because it's a uniform surface. And basically, you want to put it on a, on a flat surface. I like using a field point. Some people say that you should use your broadheads. But I find with the broadheads, because of all the angles that you've got, sometimes it doesn't give you a true reflection of if there's a wobble on that. And basically, all you do is you just gently roll your arrow back and forth. And I can already see that there is a horrible wobble on the end of this. Then what you would do is you would take um, your insert that has got that. A mark and you would just turn it a quarter turn and then put it back on there and roll it and somewhere on that arrow there will be a sweet spot and then all of a sudden you'll find that that field point will line up um, take some acetone you know wipe it down and just remark it that when you come back to gluing that you can put everything together line it up and glue it all together also, just make sure that with these, if you're using these extra added weights in the back here, that you also just put a drop of super glue or glue on the threads of that, that they all line up nicely and they stay stuck together. 
on the thousand grain arrow I had uh, all the weights come loose and uh, yeah there was a rather loud crack and uh, about two to three meters from my bow the knock came flying out of the big lid so I had to heat everything up and I had to pull everything out it was yeah it was a little bit of a mess so um, that's arrow building obviously you want to um, try and achieve a configuration where you're getting a perfect sort of arrow that's perfectly aligned perfectly straight because then you're getting closer to perfect arrow flight um, fletchers on the back of the arrow they do create drag and that is basically the reason that we put fletchers on the back of the arrow is to make sure that the light part of the arrow doesn't go past the heavy part of the arrow and uh, that's the main reason some people will say yeah they put left hand um, helicals onto the fletchers uh, onto the arrows because they the arrows come off the string because they they spring the strings are right wound that when they release that the arrow has a tendency to come off here um, arrows are very very different from bullets bullets are normally very small projectiles they're moving at an incredible speed and you've normally got a lot of rifle twist within the within the within the bow oh, within the bow within the rifle that makes it spin around its central axis with a bow we're not really getting enough um, spin on that and we're not going to get enough spin on it with a with a strong helical as well the other thing that one has got to be careful of is that if you put a these are wings essentially they're not you know they're there just to create drag so if you put too much spin on this or your fletches are too big you're going to get um, too much drag and then you're going to get what they call this parachute eff effect where you're going to get a very fast spinning tail arrow and you'll tend to find that the nose is going to start no, uh, bombing towards the ground and that the, the back is going to lift and uh, what happens is you know when you create a lot of drag you slow your arrow down which is not something that we want to achieve especially on high FOC arrows you want as much speed as you can get there and still maintain um, a stable arrow flight or perfect as near possible to perfect arrow flight um, also the other thing that one has got to be careful to consider is that if you use left hand helicals um, make sure that if you're using single bevel broadheads that you match the angle of your blade to the helical that you're using so don't use a right hand single bevel with a left hand fletch because what's going to happen is uh, they are sort of going to try and counteract one another so left helical left bevel uh, right helical right bevel the other thing with the left hand fletching is you also run the danger of when you hit your target that your arrow might unscrew itself from the broadhead and then yeah it gets messy so that can obviously be mitigated with a little bit of loctite or super glue but uh, i would just say just keep it as simple as possible Personally, I use a right-hand helical or a straight, just depending on how I feel that day. And the thing is, is to tinker with your fletches a bit. But that is insert tuning, so stay tuned, and I hope to bring you a little bit of knock tuning, and then we'll put some fletches on, and we'll get these babies flying straight. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'd love to hear some comments from you. Thanks, folks. Have a great week.